Hi, it's Dr. Greg Jantz. Hope and possibilities. Technology. Detox? Why do we need it? Next. Dr. Gregory Jans is a best-selling author of over 45 books and the founder of the Center A Place of Hope, voted a top 10 center for depression treatment in the U.S. As the pioneer of whole person care, Dr. Jans is known as the messenger of hope. Now the nation's expert on anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationships, trauma, and PTSD, here is Dr. Gregory Jantz. Let me share with you some things that I'm seeing presently. So we're a facility where people come and stay. They're here uh, with us four weeks, six weeks, whatever they need. And one of the things that we ask for initially is anything with a screen. Let me just reach over here. Something like this. Anything with a screen. Um, and here's why. We're asking that individuals set aside all distractions, all interruptions, so they can really focus on the work that they have to do here. Also, we've seen that there are a fair number of individuals that just can't give up the screen, cannot give up the device. Uh, well, maybe reluctantly they do. Dave, two arrives and they are irritable. They sometimes have sweaty palms. And, and uh, one guy goes, I can't believe it. I'm shaking. He said, I, I just, I can't believe it. I'm shaking. And he goes, I'm going through withdrawals. Technology withdrawal. Let me just say that I've seen it. I've seen it multiple times uh, in individuals coming for help. And yet, even the talk about technology addiction, even though we see it, you go to the restaurant and you see everybody on the devices and they're hardly talking to each other. You've seen it. Maybe it was supposed to be a date night, but both are on their devices. Both are in a different world. And one raises up and says to the other, what'd you say? Can you say that again? Because we have partial attention because we are partially distracted. Technology detox. Let me tell you about detox. The word usually we think of alcohol. A person needs medical detox. They need to be um, supervised medically because they're going through withdrawals. How is it that a person could be going through withdrawals from a device from a screen. What about the person when they're asked, well, how many hours do you spend online? How many hours are you, or how much time are you on Facebook, Instagram, X? And they go, well, I'm probably no more than an hour a day. We always underestimate, by the way, and, and oftentimes it's five, six hours a day. And, and maybe there's a little disbelief that it was so much time because it's subtle and it's sneaky and it reaches in and it grabs us and pulls us down a road of denial that it's a problem. We feel a sense of anxiety without our device. We feel a sense of anxiety with our device. And we do know that if you're already struggling with addiction or uh, uh, depression, and we add a lot of social media in your life. I wrote this little book called Social Media and Depression. The more times or more time I'm online, am I feeling better or worse in social media? And all those symptoms of depression uh, will be amplified. All those symptoms of anxiety will be amplified. It is real. And let me just say from a provider, healthcare, mental health person, that it's something that we see and we believe, and I believe that technology addiction is real. So let's talk about detox. Detox. And uh, here here today in, in my notes, as I was thinking about our time together, um, in, in, in one word, we live in a hyper, hyper-connected world. And it's, it's easy to be a slave of our devices. We have a generation that we're uh, was nearly born with devices tethered to them from day one. 
and it just seemed like as soon as you could put a screen in front of somebody that was the pacifier as soon as you could put the tablet in front of them that was the pacifier and we lose track of not only time but we lose track of what does this do to us now there is a lot of research now and this is not a podcast to recite all the research but there is research uh, that shows over and over and over that the developing brain, I'm going to make it super simple, but the developing brain overstimulated too much creates a craving brain. A craving brain wants more and more and more. The craving brain is an anxious brain. The craving brain is a depressed brain. As we look at this, it's true for our youth and it's true for us as adults and people will end up choosing a device to be more intimate with the device or online or digital than they are with the people around them. We will choose the online presence ultimately over the real life presence. In our field, um, there's something called virtual counseling. Hmm. Well, I'm glad and I'm grateful that we can have a virtual connection, but there is some things that are left on the table, so to speak, if I'm only doing online virtual help. Now, it can be helpful. I want to make sure that that's clear, but it cannot be the only source uh, of help. Uh, we need to be engaging in real life, real present relationships. So a technology detox. How do you know if you need one? <laughs> well, one of the things you might look at is take one day this week. We did this uh, as a family and we set aside all technology. We happened to do ours on Sunday, set it aside. And how did everybody do? Really? How did everybody do? Um, could you do it? And did you make it that whole day? On a scale of one to 10, 10 being high, did you feel anxious? Did you feel anxiety? Did you feel like you were missing out? You'll find that a one day or a half a day experiment is fascinating to do. And how did it affect you not to be online, not to be connected, not to be in social media, not to be checking, not to be tweeting, not, or Xing, um, not to be texting for one day. All right, here's what I found out. Uh, most people can do maybe, maybe a half a day. And the rest, hmm. The rest say, I can't do it. It's not worth it. It's too, I've got, you don't understand. I have to, I have to have my device. I have to be connected and I will feel a lot better. So technology can be used as the pacifier to help us emotionally feel better. There's a word that we use called dysregulated. Our emotions are all over the place and we can't seem to manage them. Give the person the pacifier, technology, and then I start to settle down. That's a sign that I might benefit from some detox. All right. Here's some other ones to look for that I made a note of. Uh, a decline in real life relationships. I'm preferring online instead of real life. I may feel less productive. Um, that's a big one. Uh, gaming as well as just staying immersed in the online world. I will feel um, it's, a, it's a disconnect, but it's a disconnect of relationships that I may also it, it it can feel dissociative i'm disconnected from relationships and i'm disassociating from real life and then i begin to do things like i neglect self-care uh, and by that i maybe i don't brush my teeth maybe i don't eat well i don't shower i don't shave or whatever i'm not doing the normal self-care or i'm doing it less and less
That's a sign. I have a list of physical symptoms. Obviously, eye strain could be one. Headaches. Um, and here's a big one. Decreased attention, attention spans. It looks like I have attention deficit disorder. And do you know why I'm being asked more and more to write these small, thin, hundred, approximately 100 page books? Because people's attention spans have dropped. The attention has dropped. And and I can't concentrate. So <laughs> it's, it's real, like this, give it to me in a few words. I can't concentrate. Um, so we know that all these are signs that I may need to try. I'm going to underline try first. Stepping back from such a high engagement with screens. That's where I say, okay, go for one day, pick a day and no screens. No cell phone. How do you do? What happens to you? Can you do it? Um, the majority of folks are, are not doing it. When asked, when given that as a homework assignment, they're, they're not able to do it. Okay. Now remember, um, technology over indulgence that becomes addiction alters brain chemistry. There is a such thing as uh, a dopamine. This uh, dopamine gets um, over pumped. So dopamine is that feel good chemical that we have in our brain. Uh, we have, we've heard of endorphins from exercising. Well, there's dopamine, which is related to that. And the dopamine has a lot to do as well with mood. And sometimes it's referred to as the brain's pleasure chemical dopamine. As you look at this, and you go, okay, I, I, I'm requiring a lot of stimuli, a lot of dopamine. I'm seeing it in my kids, I'm seeing it myself, and, and technology is running me. I'm not running it. Do a technology detox. It's just the beginning of putting guardrails around your relationship with technology. So here you go. I, I, I think you'll find if you'll do it and it's a good thing for all of us to do uh, on occasion it's a, it's a little mental health checkup is technology running me or do i have the appropriate guardrails around it now there's also things uh, from pornography to bully behavior to unhealthy social media um, that's out there that also has to be factored into this and the craving for social media, the craving for that online content can be pretty intense, pretty intense. Um, so here's my seven steps uh, to just plan on a experimental technology detox. Number one, plan your progress. Um, technology is intertwined, intertwined in our daily lives and be intentional, have a plan and go, when am I going to do this? and for how long and commit to it and see, did I do it? I'm suggesting here just initially one day. Um, sometimes folks will experiment with half day. Go oh, okay, between 8 a.m. noon, I'm not gonna touch it. And you go, well, that's not gonna work because I, I work and I have to do emails and other things. So you might have to pick another time. Um, and here's the thing about technology detox. Let all the emotions come up, let the frustration, and sometimes there's the headache, sometimes there's physical symptoms. Just let that emerge. Jot down what you're experiencing. Um, am I feeling on a scale of one to 10? Is my depression an eight, nine, 10? Is my anxiety up there? Um, do I want to turn to other things like food? Am I feeling an urge to drink? Am I feeling an urge to do other things? addictive behaviors really important to look at that and keep in mind when i'm doing a detox yeah uh, i'm reducing it i'm removing it but i here's a key i, I want to replace it so something that um, i have done is i've purposely planned a hike where i knew there would be no or poor cell service so that would eliminate some temptation and i'm doing something physical um, keep your water intake up. 
if you're on a technology detox, it does make a difference. But do something physical. If it's not a hike, it's a bike ride, it's it's a walk, but keep physical engagement going. Um, replace with something else. Now, here's the problem. I'm a gamer or I'm online all the time. I don't know what to replace it with. Well, what? I have to replace it with something. So that's why I say generally it's the physical. It's a bike ride. It's outside. Um, and then something else to think about. Clarifying my goals about why am I doing this? I want to be healthy. I want to be healthy physically, emotionally. I don't want to be dependent upon uh, social media for my self-esteem or I want to connect with real people in real time. So always keep in mind, okay, this is an experiment to start with, but I, I want to um, replace and re-engage with real human beings. So just some thoughts to think about as you think about a technology detox. There, That's the first step. And let me encourage you, do this until you're clean, clean, at least a good day. Now, I love it when I see people who can do this. They've done it for two days and they're on the third day. Something happens on the third day. We find it here in a place of hope with our clients. The third day, you begin to feel like, oh, wow, I think I'm okay. This, I feel better. Something's happening. And we've had clients who um, it's been a week and go, well, would you like your device back? You want to check some email or text anybody? And we've had clients who say, no, no, I'm doing really good right now. I don't want to mess that up. Okay. So, and I'm not, I'm saying in our hyper-connected technology world, uh, I'm not against it. Okay. But I, I want us to develop and manage a healthy non-addictive, non-interfering, and it will, if we don't monitor this and then make adjustments, it'll be a factor in our relationships. It de If I'm with you and I just pull out my device and I'm texting without saying anything or communicating, it devalues the relationship. It's a barrier. It's hard to be close in real time if I'm trying to get those needs met online. So just some considerations uh, for more on this. Of course, I've held up a couple of times my little book, Social Media and Depression. And let's just begin with a simple technology detox. See what happens. And am I able to manage it? Am I able to replace it with real-time physical activities and real-time people, real-time. All right, just some considerations as we look at the topic of detox and why at this point it might be a good consideration. People say, I feel cleaner, I feel healthier. I didn't like what that social media was doing to me. Uh, and you begin to look at this from a different perspective and you feel better. And then we grow these muscles that build boundaries around technology. And we are able to feel like we're in charge and we're governing it, we're governing our time and we're governing content and we feel a whole lot better.